Hey guys, this is Lewis, and as part of my State of the Device series, I wanted to take a look back at the next bit Robin five months after its initial release. Five months in the phone industry is a long time when phones such as the Axon 7, the OnePlus 3, and more have made their debut, but thankfully it's safe to say that this phone is still really worth picking up. In this video, we'll go over updates, performance, camera quality, and more compared to today's standards, so sit back and check it out. The phone itself after all this time is on 6.0.1, which is perfectly fine considering Nextbit is committed to updating the device the second they can. So we can assume it's getting Android N and hopefully, possibly Android O in the future, we'll see when it happens. Also for you security enthusiasts out there, the Robin is at the June level monthly update and considering it's August 6th, it's not too far off and at least it's doing a lot better than many other manufacturers out there on the market at the time. This being Nextbit's only phone though, it's safe to assume that they aren't going to be months and months back on the security patches, which should give you some peace of mind. The phone bleeds aesthetic as far as the stock launcher too. The stock launcher is very translucent with Nextbit blue and it's really going for like a minimalistic feel on the phone. So minimalistic to the point where they don't even show you widgets. You actually have to pinch for those on the stock home screen. It's different and I know what they're going for, but I still think it kills the point of the widget. You should be able to see it right up front, not have to do another unnecessary motion to bring it up. But enough about that, let's talk about performance. I'm pleased to say it's absolutely fantastic. The 808 on this device runs like a dream and in my opinion, much better than the Nexus 5X, which plagued me with issues such as stuttering and rapid battery drain. The extra gigabyte of RAM in the Robin really does help too. But what also helps out a lot is that the software is lean, lean as can possibly be. You won't find any apps that will bloat your storage immensely, although there is some stock apps that are very bare bones. It isn't entirely a deal breaker, but still, I mean, you would expect more out of those, and we'll talk about that later. But as I was saying before, buttery smooth performance all around. And although I'm not a huge mobile gamer, Pokemon Go and some tower defense games work flawlessly. And speaking about Pokemon Go, which gives me a great segue to battery life in which the game tanks in less than 90 minutes. Granted, the phone doesn't have an incredibly large battery, 2680 milliamp hours to be exact, but without any major gaming, this phone comfortably lasts me a day on medium usage, which is exactly what I need out of a phone. But at times where it may not be enough, the phone can charge quick, and it feels like it charges faster than any other phone I've had. Once again, probably because of the smaller battery. It's also worth noting that Nextbit teased a while back about a revolutionary new way to dramatically increase battery life on Nextbit devices and they're going to share more about that in Q4 of this year. If this is true and they update the device to Android N on top of their battery plan, the Robin is going to be one hell of a battery monster, so hopefully we can stay tuned for that. So on to the hardware, which is actually really good for the device. The screen is a 5.2 inch LCD, which is great for color vibrance, but not the best for daylight usage, something that is kind of expected out of LCDs. But honestly, one of the main things I like about this display is that it feels perfect. It's not too large and it's not too small. It's just juggling between the two sizes and more manufacturers should take a cue from this. Another thing to point out is that the phone is 1080p, which if you held this phone, you wouldn't be able to tell a difference between that and a 2K display. It looks sharp, it's very clear, and it saves battery drainage from using an overkill screen. But the rest of the hardware is no slouch at all either. The speakers on the phone are absolutely great with clear sound and no weird buzzing or any distorting effects at max volume, which gives even the old school HTC Boom Sound phones a run for their money. The fingerprint sensor on the side of the phone is really interesting and in my opinion feels better than having it on the back of the phone because it requires less stretching from your pointer finger, which is a first world problem I know, I know, but though coming from the 6P, it's a little strange having to press the power button then holding the finger down Whereas with the 6P, you just hold your finger on the sensor and that's it, it magically unlocks. With the next bit, you have to wait for that button press and everything. It's a little weird, you'll get used to it after a couple days. Nonetheless, the fingerprint sensor is quality and it offers a very snappy unlock. Now the camera quality is something that Nextbit has been slowly improving since launch and now that it has a few months of life, it's still not incredible but it does the job fairly well. Colors and daylight are really vibrant and some pictures are very true to life with its 13 megapixel camera. But the one thing I really really had an issue with is focusing on short range photos. Sometimes when taking a group photo with people some faces would blur out or the background would be getting focused even if the phone shows that it's not. The focus is not reliable and it does take a little bit of tinkering around with if short range photos is a major thing for you. On the other hand, the front camera works fairly well. Really no complaints here, it takes good pictures, I'll bite some noise here and there. 
Video taking on the phone though was as good as any other phone in its price range. Where the video is a little shaky, microphones are somewhat dulled out, but if you know how videos on smartphones look and sound like, then you already know kind of what to expect. It is good, don't get me wrong, it is pretty good video. It's just, you've seen so much better from other phones such as the 6P. What we were saying about the gallery app being bare bones before is no different in the camera app where you are very limited to what options you can mess around with. Sure, you can you know, turn on HDR and flash, those really basic settings, but if you've been spoiled by the software enhancements and modes that LG and Samsung put into their flagships, you may be a little bit disappointed by this. But once again, there's always, always an app for adding the effects or different styles or themes you want to a picture. It's just that you won't find it on the stock camera app. It's really safe to say Nextbit wanted to make their own flavor of stock Android without actually using stock Android. The built-in apps aren't incredible like Nexus phones, aside from the Google services apps, of course. But one of the big things Nextbit really pushed when this phone was announced was that it was going to be a phone with a cloud-first initiative. It would be able to offload apps you don't use with all of its data still intact and even back up photos and videos. They were so into this idea that each Nextbit comes preloaded with 100 gigabytes of cloud data that it can use on top of its 32 gigabytes of onboard storage so that this service could be used to its full potential. And if you ever need an app again that was offloaded or sent to the cloud, a single tap would bring it right back to your phone. As a person who goes phone to phone, I generally just download the most absolutely vital apps I need to test out phones with different capabilities, so I never actually got much benefit out of it. As far as photos and videos, I already use Google Photos, which has been my savior for backing up all my media content without any hassle. But now with that said, if the biggest feature of the phone wasn't a big deal to me, why would I even recommend it when there's phones such as the OnePlus 3 and Axon 7? The answer is pretty simple, and it's actually the best quality of the phone. It's the design. When this was first shown off, we hadn't seen anything like it. The colors were bold. The footprint was, well, it was similar to the Xperia line. But it had an elegance because of the symmetry and the use of shapes. There's two circles on the back for the camera and flash, two circles for the front camera as well as the sensors, and then two vertical circles for your speakers. The design is simply beautiful, and it definitely gets the attention of people around me whenever I bring it out. But let's be real, design alone won't probably make you buy the phone. But honestly, at a sub $300 price tag, you're getting a great set of speakers, all day battery life, smooth performance, a decent camera, snappy fingerprint sensor, and most importantly, a really, really smooth experience. Nextbit is really dedicating to making its Kickstarter champion a great phone with continuous support. And hopefully, hopefully, that stays true with any future devices. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you like the video, subscribe, like. You've heard this a million times, but I'll still say it. Uh, my Instagram's in the description, my Twitter's in the description, and stay tuned because we're gonna cover the Note 7, the iPhone 7, the Nexus 7, the LG 7, all those 7s, we're gonna cover them all. Uh, but till then, stay tuned, and thanks. Have a good one.